Today, I wanted to provide something of a channel update. We did some of these when I was very active earlier in the year. And then, of course, the past two months, I've not really been around. So I figured it was time, now that I'm getting back on my feet, to talk to you guys about what's coming up in the immediate few days. Now, the stuff I'm going to talk to you about in this video is not everything on my mind. But it is what is concrete, what has been in production, and what you'll see. Because I've actually made a ton of videos, and they're all going to start going out very, very, very soon. So... I wanted to keep you guys on track with my plans. This is more a video for the kind of deeper fans of mine uh, who are interested in what the current mindset is and how things are going. Which, just to be clear, is pretty much the same as I had earlier in the year. Yeah, we've had this horrible blip during the, the back part of May, June and July specifically. Which has kind of kicked all my plans back. I was going to do something very special for my 10th anniversary on YouTube. But now I think we're too late in the year, so it will come after the anniversary, but the sentiment's still there. So it's a very broad overview. Many of the series ideas that I had, many I didn't even talk to you guys about earlier in the year, are still there. The main ambition right now of covering Guild Wars, but also trying to branch out a little bit, be a little bit of something more, and to do it in another one of my big gaming passions, that being the Elder Scrolls, that's all the same. As you've seen, as soon as I got back to things, Arena started going out and we will continue along with that franchise. The viewership for Arena, a lot of people have talked to me about, because obviously it's way lower than my Guild Wars 2 viewership, but I've always known that that was going to be the case. I even mentioned earlier in the year that that was going to be the case. It does not bother me at all. All that matters is a little bit of trajectory and building things up, and that takes a long, long time. Most of you guys weren't around when I started building myself up in the Guild Wars scene, but I, I produced like hundreds of videos before I would even break, you know, a few hundred views per production. So it's all totally fine. I'm just trying to lay a bit of a baseline for myself as a fan and for you guys as well to get some content on there. I'll probably move into more like video essay-ish stuff as we go forwards. I think that that's more important realistically for actually growing. But for now, I just want to share the franchise and get used to the franchise and do the best series as I can. It's all the same plans. And so speaking of Arena, in the immediate future, you're going to see the end of Arena. In fact, tomorrow is the final part. Uh, I've actually already beat the game. So the 21 videos, I think it is, that's the full series there. But I've produced a bonus episode, which goes into like amazing behind the scenes stuff. I don't want to spoil all of it, but basically that the game was actually going to be a multi-party game where you weren't just controlling one guy, you were controlling multiple guys, and think if that had happened, how that would have completely adjusted the entire franchise. Maybe it would have gone the way of the Dodo, like the early Might and Magic format games. Uh, as well as like enemies that never appeared, developer intent, some just really, really cool facts and trivia that I never found a good way to really filter through the episodes we had which are really very dungeon crawly centric. So there's going to be one more part to that. And then I'm probably concluding Arena. Again, I did have some ideas of maybe doing like a story law recap video. Uh, or, or like a review of Arena at the end of the series. I think those would two be really worthwhile ideas. But for now, they're shelved because I want to find a good format for both of those things. And my focus is elsewhere. So yeah, Arena, that's one thing to look forward to. The conclusion. And anyone who's been waiting for the whole thing to be done. Well, there you go, it is. Unfortunately, it's a couple of months later than I wanted it. I wanted us to be in Daggerfall right now, but there you have it. Uh, not everything can be perfect. Speaking of Daggerfall, I am going ahead with Daggerfall. I'm really excited. It's the only uh, Elder Scrolls game that I've never played at this point. There's like a couple of uh, DLC or expansion things for Skyrim that I never played either, but Daggerfall is a full game I've never played. That doesn't mean that the series I want to do for you all is going to be blind or anything, but it does mean I've got a ton of excitement. However... You're not going to be seeing Daggerfall like this coming Monday or anything. Instead, in this next immediate month to month and a half, I have some other gameplay series of which many of those videos are already produced. So let's talk about them. And they're actually starting. Arena ends tomorrow. And then these series start the day after that and then the day after that. So there's going to be lots of new stuff on the channel coming up. First of all, and please bear with me with this is better than it sounds. I have about a 30 video long series that is complete. I have the whole thing done. Patreon people can view it early and stuff, but there's no way this is going to like take a break halfway. We'll go start to finish just like with Stellaris. Uh, this is a Guild Wars series based on the open world. Again, again, bear with me. All right, listen. I know the open world is not very good. I know that Guild Wars 2 leveling isn't very good. I know that, but from a very casual perspective, an early review perspective, people love the open world and kind of the sense of freedom and exploration to Guild Wars 2. But there's a lot of things I take issue with it. And specifically, this is a map 
complete series. And so that is something I have never done. I've never done a map complete series because, frankly, I think the open world is too boring for it. Or for many years, I thought it was too boring. Many of the hearts are copy-pasted from one another. Many of the vista ideas and the kind of jumping that you need to execute to get them is kind of copied. A lot of the hero challenges are just basic communes with uninteresting lore. There is a lot of really amazing stuff in the open world and easter eggs and fun things, but it's kind of bogged down by this other stuff, and I was just never passionate about doing a series. There's 25 full-fledged maps and six cities before you get a gift of exploration. How can I cover it? That was my mindset for a long time. However, obviously last year we finished the Let's Play. And one thing you might have noticed, at the end of the Let's Play, we have that montage sequence, remember? Where I throw all the stats of the various characters on the screen while we're listening to Fear Not This Night. Hopefully you guys watching this know what I'm talking about there. But anyway, I, I showed stuff like their deaths, and also their map completion progress. So I had stuff like, you know, some of these characters I played like 50, 60 hours of Guild Wars 2, going through the personal story. And they only had like 6% map completion or like 12% map completion. And that was like a really profound thing for me. It made me realize that with the personal story LP, I really tried to be as comprehensive as possible. I have a series on the jumping puzzles. I have series on the dungeons, which I did after the, the personal story playthrough. I have the personal story itself. I have shown everything about Guild Wars 2 from 2012, except map comp. And I don't know, I was on, about this time last year, I was a bit on a, a kick of, like, chronicling the game. I feel some value and some worth in really laying everything out. I want people to be like, look, you like Guild Wars, you come to Wooden Potatoes' channel, because everything is there, you know? You want to know something about 2012, he's got it. But there's this gaping hole in my library, and it was the open world, so I really wanted to find a way to work. This was last year. And about last year, a member of the community, by the name of Tech Zoon kind of came forward and said, look, I'm really good at map completion. I can get these maps actually done at a normal speed, just r running around and exploring in about 40 minutes per map, 40, 50 minutes per map. And now that was huge for me because for me to do that, I'd need to like run overlay software or like get really good at certain elements of the open world. And even then, it'd probably take me like an hour, an hour and a half to fully map complete. But here was a guy that was saying, look, I can just do it. I want another gift of exploration or two more gifts of exploration anyway. And I'll submit the footage to you. And then you can commentate over it. And you've got snappy footage with actual bite-sized, reasonably sized videos. And it will all be there. So I was very, very keen on that idea. This was about a year ago. And I'm not joking, over the whole past year, at a rate of maybe one upload every two weeks or so, he has gradually been submitting footage. We kind of crunched really hard on it this past few weeks, just as we were getting to the finish line. And I actually end up having my own gameplay in there as well on some of the parts. But I do now have a complete map completion thing. Now, my dream for this series was to not have to speed up the footage anyway, so that you could watch it and alongside me you could play if you like. That never ended up happening. The footage is slightly sped up. I know some of you guys who watch me don't like when I speed footage up because I speed up too much and it makes you feel sick or whatever. I was very aware of that doing this, so I hardly speed them up. It's like a 10% to 20% speed up. That's about it. I think there's two episodes that are actually kind of quick. But in this way, I think the videos are actually really good. So I can't wait for you guys to see it. I just hope that people trust me when it comes to doing the open world. I give you lots of memories about my time there as a player over the years and prominent things that I've done. Random patches where there were crazy farms in certain areas or what the game was like at launch versus the game now. You obviously get the value of it being a full world completion guide. Every vista is shown, every hero challenge, all that stuff. I talk about all the lore, like at the Temple of the Ages, that there's a hero challenge where time began and I'll give you big lore discussions. I compare it to Guild Wars 1 and in fact the whole series big shout out to that shaman as well i've supplemented every episode with that shaman's historical guide to tyria so you can actually see what the places were like in guild wars 1 compared to guild wars 2 and i talk about where the overlap is and how i felt that they translated areas from one game into the other really well i actually had a really crazy idea for this series at one point where i'd be playing guild wars 1 footage and guild wars 2 footage would be rolling in the equivalent area of the world and you do like a picture in picture thing which I love the idea of, but I think it's a whole different kettle of fish. I, fish, I had enough, enough topics to talk about anyway. You know, I give people hints and things about tricky areas. There's a lot going on. I am a complete motor mouth through every single episode. 
and I'm very, very, very proud of it. So, you're going to be seeing that go up. Arena ends tomorrow, the day after that. This Open World series begins, and that will be running through this month and into next as well. And I hope people stick about with it. Should be fun. Shifting gears to another topic, there's Living World Season 2. So, I know a lot of you guys are excited about the main proper LP. I am too. I want to get caught up to Icebrood Saga, and I want to get caught up to even, like, Ends of Dragons would be nice, so that when the X-Pack comes out, we kind of can have it rolling out at the right speed. You'll remember earlier in the year, I did a mini update video where I said, look, guys, I'm trying to juggle too much stuff here. I'm putting Living World Season 2 on hold. That's not changed. That still is not actually a priority for me. Probably after we see the Open World series is done, so these 31 videos are out, that's when Season 2 will pick back up. Probably, but I'm not too sure. One of the reasons that Arena had a big break and Living World Season 2 is that where I was swapping between them over and over, I just kind of killed my enthusiasm for them both. And then we ended up doing Stellaris and stuff. Well, that killed enthusiasm is still kind of there, and I've got some other stuff I'm really excited about. Namely, let's talk about The Last Day Dawns. So, you can have the Open World series and... You're going to have The Last Day Dawn. So this is another series that I can't wait for you guys to see. I was talking about this a lot earlier in the year. And I'm so sad that it hasn't had the fanfare it should have. Someone basically remade Guild Wars 1. Pre-searing Ascalon and early stuff. As a JRPG in RPG Maker. And it's incredible. And I've been playing it. I've got many gameplay videos for you guys to watch of that. So you're going to get a double whammy of uh, Guild Wars stuff. Earlier in the year, I talked about my plans to have, like, two gameplay series going out, and they would alternate every other day. So it'd be like, on one day you get a Guild Wars show, the next day you get an, an Elder Scrolls show, and then it's Guild Wars, and then Elder Scrolls. Or maybe it'd be Guild Wars, and then Stellaris, and then Guild Wars, and then Stellaris. I like that idea a lot. That's still the same, but I don't have any non-Guild Wars made for you once Arena ends. So, and I, that's what I'm making as I currently do this video, and I'll reveal to you guys later when I've made more progress on it. It's going to require a little bit of modding. Nothing quite as crazy as Stellaris, but hey, I'm learning C++ now, so that's nice. Uh, so, but until that series is ready, and I'll talk to you guys about that when we get closer, you're going to have a double whammy of Guild Wars. You can have Last Day Dawns alternating with the Open World series. And Last Day Dawns might sound boring to some of you guys. Please give it a shot. I don't think I've had as much fun recording a gameplay series for a long time. And I haven't done blind gameplay for years now. Okay, so those are the big projects for the short term. There's also like small projects in the short term that I've still got my eye on. I want to remind you guys and assure you that yes, Empire Divided, we were earlier in the year going through lots of Canton lore. You will be seeing more of that. The views on the Empire Divided dropped a lot, which I wasn't expecting because I thought that people would like that. It's like pure undiluted Guild Wars lore about an upcoming expansion. But I guess people uh, people weren't as into it as I was. I I'm wondering if you guys don't really like the lore as much as you like speculation. And there is speculation in the Empire Divided series. But it's mostly, um, you know, I'm trying to teach you guys things that you probably don't know. In any case, I still like the series. There will be more Empire Divided. We only got about a third of the way through the article before, even though we did like three videos. That's how much discussion there is. I've got my eye on that. We will be continuing it. Uh, Guild Wars newsy stuff, like today the Sunqua Veil vale trailer came out. I'll be covering stuff like that. I don't know whether I'll do a trailer analysis for this. Maybe maybe I will. There seems to be some good dialogue and stuff in it. But when the trailer it's set, when the Fractal itself comes out, I'll probably be covering it. Obviously, that's set in Canther itself. Uh, and sort of as an extension to that, we do have a gap. The two most recent Living World releases... My coverage has just been not good. And even the one before that, my coverage was not that good. I was just sort of getting back into it. And, you know, we covered, like, the uh, the Visions of the Past uh, event with the, the Dwarven Tomes and stuff. I was just getting back into it, and then kind of everything fell apart. So I would like to still look at that. I've got my eye on it. Nothing too concrete. And then also, uh, there is an outstanding thing from Guild Wars 1, and that is Winds of Change. So earlier this year in 2020, you saw I did a full playthrough of Factions, and that was a lot of fun. But Factions is really only half the story. You've got the Factions playthrough that then segues into Winds of Change, uh, which is more about the Ministry of Purity and bridging the gap between the two games. It's also much more challenging. I, I do want to play it. I'm just not sure on the format because that Factions playthrough that I did earlier in the year like has had no legs. Like You guys watched it when it came out, but usually when I produce something, I'll get like the odd comment on it in the subsequent weeks or months. 
Like, no one seems to watch that or say anything about that. It seems to have just been completely dead and forgotten. And I don't like making stuff that just gets dead and forgotten. And I'm concerned that winds of change might as well. So that's on my mind. And that would be for, sort of for the short term. One of the main reasons I really want to do winds of change is because... I only ever played it like twice as it was coming out and there's lots of really compelling stuff that even I was beginning to forget about like the enigmatic Zunro right there's this really big badass character that has all this lore and information about him but and he's on screen right now I'll put this image up for you but he doesn't actually appear in game like it's this big deliberate mystery. And End of, End of Dragons could look into stuff like this so I think it'd be worthwhile not just to share with you guys but even just for me as a fan. You know, to re-familiarize myself with that area of the world. So, that is a channel update. I have only talked about short-term stuff here. Believe me, there's a lot of exciting things that I've got on my mind. But as ever, I don't have the confidence to go over it until I've got something concrete. So today, this is what's concrete. Thanks very much. Again, I feel very weird doing channel update videos because I feel like... I don't know, they're, they're, they're not content in a way. So, if you're here listening to me, thanks so much. And hopefully... You'll be entertained by the stuff that I'm trying to make for you. See you next time, guys.